Yeah, it's obviously really exciting. You know, we're you know one win away from being in a grand final. I guess that's how you can look at it. But um, but yeah, I guess I you know I was lucky enough to play finals in my in my first year last year. I played you know elimination and then a semi final and. Uh, yeah, so I feel like I've got a little bit of experience in that in that area, but yeah, obviously a prelims, you know, the biggest game of my career so far. So yeah, I'm really excited and just can't wait for it. So it's Sydney that'll be the first team into the 2012 Grand Final. The Swans on their way to a 15th Grand Final in Jude Bowen's 300. I've got enormous talent as we knew. You know, they had 32 scoring shots in the end and 26 more inside 50s. So, you know, they're a quality team and you don't finish on the top of the ladder with all, you know, for, for no reason at all. They're going to, you know, take some beating this weekend. We've got enormous respect for them as a, as a football team and, you know, we've had a couple of good challenges against them so far this year and I'm sure there'll be another one this Saturday. Your feet barely touch the ground and, uh, and he'll enjoy this because he's right by his side. He's been in stellar form. Up in front was Franklin. Loose ball at the back. There's Johnson again. Digs them in hard. Little hand pass to Malcheski. Finds himself in space. Up the middle of the ground like a surgeon's knife. Hanabry gives the hand pass to O'Keefe. Brilliant by the Swans. Reed lines up at goal. It does not get better than that. Wonderful goal to Sydney. That will hurt. The grand final from the top shelf. There's the bounce. Unbelievable feeling, words can't describe it. This is the ultimate prize in footy and I'm absolutely stoked. I've been dreaming of this day since I was a little boy and you know coming to coming to grand finals growing up in Melbourne. I can't believe I've got one of these around my neck. This is unbelievable. Woo! Yeah 2012, uh, it's a long time ago now. Seems like a lifetime ago, really. Uh, but yeah, to achieve the ultimate success in, in just my second year was was unbelievable. It was, it was a really special time. You know, that whole final series, we we probably weren't thought that we'd we'd do too much damage deep into September. But uh, you know, the group we had got together and, and we really achieved something something really special. And all those memories of, of 2012 are really fond. And you know, I look back on them and just on my face. Yeah, going into my into my third year, uh, yeah, as you said, I had a really really good pre-season and just wanted to take my game to another level. I, I had 40 ga 45 games under my belt and, and felt like, felt like I was starting to make inroads in, in my career. And um, yeah, in the, I think it was yeah the third nab game that I was struck down with a knee injury. It was about 10 minutes into a, a game against Gold Coast out at Blacktown. You know, I'd had a reasonable start and I was I was pretty happy with how I was going, but slight change of direction and my uh, my left knee buckled under me and. And that was, yeah, that was that was the ACL. That was the start of the injury. Yeah, it's obviously you know pretty flattening. I guess I've uh, I've had a pretty good pre-season, and yeah, to come to sort of two weeks out from from round one to uh, to yeah do my ACL is yeah really disappointing for me. And you know I think the coach is a bit disappointed too. So yeah, it's disappointment all around, I guess. Yeah, unfortunately he's torn his anterior cruciate ligament. He's sidestepped on his left knee and and heard it snap straight away. Uh, and so scans on Sunday showed he torn the ligament. And he's going to need surgery now to to either repair it with an artificial ligament or to reconstruct it. And he's um, just considering his options this week to work out which which path he's going to take. Certainly, the type of kid that I'm sure will throw everything into his rehab and get himself right. And I've got no question about that at all. Just the way he's approached his time here at the Sydney Swans, you couldn't be more pleased with the way he's gone about it. Yeah, I suppose initially you you, you sort of don't think about it. Um, 
I tried to convince the doctor that it wasn't an ACL because uh, because I'd felt fine after. I mean, the initial pain's really really painful and it hurts a lot. But after that, I was running around, moving around, and and tried to convince myself that I'd be all right. But once scans confirmed that it was an ACL and, and season ending, uh, it is it's a hard pill to swallow, especially because of of what the what the first two years of my career had, had done and. Um, yeah, it, it was really tough to come to terms with, but I knew I was only 21 years old and, and had a you know hopefully long career ahead of me, so I wasn't too worried about it. Uh, I just wanted to get stuck into to an operation and then to the rehab to, to get back and prepare for the 2014 season. Yeah, Alex is coming on pretty well. He's uh, done a lot of running, and obviously after a couple of the uh, operations that he had last year, it was a disappointing season for him, but he's done a, a pretty big pre-season today and a lot of running and he's really two weeks away uh, from team training. So uh, he's been coming along really well. I'll probably look at that pre-season and a lot of things did go well for me and, and my body was good, but there were a few signs that sort of would have suggested the knee wasn't in, in great shape and great health. In saying that, I did tick every box. I, I did a lot of training and you know I did enough to, to get back and play, obviously to, to convince the medical staff and, and the coaches here that I, that I was right to play. Um, but yeah, as you said, you know, 10 minutes in, it was, it was a similar story to when I first did it. I, 10 minutes in the reserves and just jumped for a ball as I'd done a thousand times of training and, and my knee buckled again. And then it's, uh, yeah, you start asking questions and you start, you start doubting yourself to, to be able to come back, I suppose. It's, it's another, you know, you've got a long journey in front of you, another 12 month rehabilitation and you completely, you know, before the season had even started, I think it was before round one that I, that I played in the reserves and um, yeah, I'd already written the 2014 season off so it is pretty hard to come to terms with um, but yeah I suppose over the last few years I've just I've just figured out how to deal with those setbacks and um, how to move forward. It's the reason why we've stuck with him is you know, there's, a, there's a few reasons. Uh, one is the, the belief that he can still be a good quality AFL player and um, his ability to be able to um, to play like he did early days and, and train like he does has put him in that bracket that even though those setbacks have been huge so far that we've kept persisting with him because just of that absolute probably dogged belief that we've got along with him that he can still be a, a very good AFL player. I think in 2014 I was, I was always really optimistic about returning to play and retirement never really entered my mind then. Uh, you know, I was still, what was I, 20, 22, 23. Uh, I felt as though I had a, a fair bit of footy left in front of me and it was just an infection that was underpinning all those things so I, I felt if I went on a strong course of antibiotics and, and took the right steps towards getting you know, my health back, uh, I, a reconstruction would be successful. So that's, yeah, that's the way we went. 2014 had a, another reconstruction in, in I think August um, and then yeah, that didn't last too long, it was in there for probably a month, maybe six weeks. And then my knee blew up again and, and reacted to, to the infection. So that's when everything sort of came out again and, and we, we waited for a while. But, but over the last yeah, three or four years, I've, there's been a lot of time where I haven't had an ACL and uh, I've just been, just been living and functioning without one. Yeah, so today we're, we're off to uh, Castle Ray Imaging out at Westmead for a white blood cell scan, which will hopefully paint a bit of a picture of, as to what's going on in the knee. And then... You know, the ideal result from that is that uh, everything's going well and we can sort of go ahead with surgery in the next in the next couple of weeks. It's obviously massive. It's something that I've been waiting for for the last 12 months since I had, uh, you know, the ACL and the knee cleaned up in September last year. I've, I've been waiting for for the green light to go ahead and finally get the, the reconstruction that I've been waiting for. And, you know, ideally today all goes well and then we can get the get the green light to go ahead and have a reconstruction you know within the next couple of weeks and, and move forward from there. So you've been off the antibiotics for four weeks? Yeah four weeks today yep. Yeah. Alrighty then, um, same deal as last time, yep. uh, blood Tape sample, blood. we'll label it for about an hour and a bit, yep. then go away for that time, do whatever you like then, yep. come back in about an hour and a half-ish, yep. we'll give you the blood back and then pictures at about 2.30ish yep. today yeah? Yep. No Any questions at all? No that's it. Cool.
everything looks good and they they made the white blood cells radioactive and the activity of those were was normal so it suggests that there was no infection and you know it's pretty much the green light to go ahead and have a, have surgery and get a reconstruction i'm obviously really excited about it you know this is i was waiting i thought you know a month ago that uh, it would have been it, this test would have enabled me to have surgery but they wanted me to get off the antibiotics and that type of thing so the fact that i've got off them and infection stayed away then they still looks healthy and and clear in terms of getting an operation, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely wrapped about it. The end of 2015, October, November rolls around and uh, I sort of met with a number of surgeons to, to discuss different options. Obviously, I'd had a couple of LARS, you know, in the last, in the couple of years leading up to 2015. So the discussion was around that uh, or to go traditional again, but I decided because missing so much footy, I wanted to get back and play as as soon as I could, I decided to go with a Lars hybrid. That was the advice I'd been given and it was suggested that it would work. Uh, so I went ahead with that in probably mid-November 2015. I think that lasted in my leg for, you know, just over a week. My, my leg, my knee blew up and um, it was visibly, uh, you know, angry and unhealthy, I suppose, and didn't look like that, that things were going to work. So I was, I was actually rushed to hospital um, probably nine days after that operation and, and put in hospital on, a, um, on antibiotics to try and counteract whatever was going on in my knee. And then uh, in the week after that, I had two, two procedures on my knee to to remove the stuff in there and, and try and get the health of my knee back. So yeah, I went ahead with, a, with operations with, with Julian Fowler. We did a two-stage knee reconstruction you know, in February, I think, uh, 2016, and then May, at the end of May 2016. And, and since then, everything's, everything's been really good. Feels like I've been away a lot longer than just a month, so it's a month post-op now, and uh, yeah, everything's everything's going well with the surgery, and spent a good time in Melbourne with the family and um, getting looked after by mum and dad, which has been nice. But yeah, obviously really looking forward to getting back into rehab, and, and this is the start of the, the road back, so yeah, excited. He's never given up, which is a you know a huge credit to him, and to be able to watch that fight. Um, the highs and the lows for him has been quite amazing to watch and um, he's the loudest bloke in weights, he's the loudest bloke on the, the training track. Um, so it's been a, an unbelievable ride uh, for the worst, but we've seen the true character of him um, come out and hopefully when he gets that chance to get back out there, um, you know, we'll be all wrapped to see him. Uh, yeah, obviously pretty excited. Um, it's been 906 days since I've last ran, so but who's counting? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's good. I've, I've been on the Ultra G for, for about two weeks now, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it was huge. You know, it was a scheduled day off that, that the boys came in and supported me on my first run in you know, two and a half years. It, yeah, it had been a long time since I had run, and I think a lot of them had never seen me run, to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of the new guys that had, that had only been at the club for a year or two. So to, to see them come out and, and support me was massive for me and um, it gave me a lot of confidence that, that they still have my back and uh, still support me and support what I'm going through.
Yeah, throughout the, the whole four years, the, the club and my teammates and you know my whole support network has been huge for me. But you know, there's been times where it's been really tough. You spend a lot of time in, in rehab and in the dungeon by yourself, and you don't feel a part of it. I mean, every every bloke on the list is is preparing for a game on the Saturday or Sunday coming, and and you're not, and you know that you're gonna have to wait a, a fair while till you actually get the chance to run out again. So it has been really hard. And in terms of guys that I've played with uh, at the club, there's there's a lot I haven't. Uh, there's a lot, you know, the, as the AFL industry is, there's a lot of turnover every year and I wouldn't have played with majority of the list now um, that runs out there every weekend. So it, it has been tough at times, but, but the support that I've had, you know, right from the top of the, the organisation to the bottom has, has been huge and, and they've always backed me in to, to get back and I just look forward to repaying this, this club and, and being able to play with, with those guys that I've never played with. So Alex in the pre-season of 2013 um, suffered a, an ACL injury that required reconstructive surgery um, and unfortunately since then he's had uh, a total of five re knee reconstructions and uh, 12 surgeries in total. So part of Alex's last um, period in rehab was a trip to the United States, to Philadelphia. Um, to spend some time with Bill Knowles, who's a renowned um, rehabilitation specialist. Um, now, this was, this was in November last year, and it was a, an opportunity for us to try something a little bit different, um, having a fresh look um, at some rehabilitation ideas, incorporating things like um, running technique, um, strength, agility, um, and tying everything together. Um, we certainly learnt a lot and uh, Alex really enjoyed the experience there. And some of the things that we learned over there we've, we've brought back and have been using right through to this week. Lift the heel. Good. Put. Good. That. You know, a knee joint is not going not gonna to survive on its own whether it's got a healthy ACL or not. It's about everything else around it, you know, working together and um, being able to stabilise, stabilise the whole body. So it's it's about putting those things that, that he's taught me and different exercises and movements, you know, into my training, and, and we've implemented that over the last six months, and it's uh, it's been really positive. I've changed my technique on how I, how I go about it, and it's more about using two feet and having a more balanced approach than than previously, probably just stepping off the one foot and, and putting too much pressure on one leg. Um, but yeah, his his techniques have, have definitely helped me in in my agility and I feel like that's an area that, that I'm pretty strong in now. Yeah, Reese has been huge for me. He's, he was huge for me in my first couple of years. He, he showed me the ropes, I suppose, of, of AFL and, and taught me a lot of things in my first couple of years and I absolutely loved playing alongside side him and you know I'm it's really fortunate that, that we won a premiership together so we'll always be tied because of that. Um, but then, even more so in the last in the last few years, while I've been going through this, he's had a couple of knee reconstructions in his in his time, and he's got real empathy for for what I'm going through and, and for what everyone goes through, I suppose, with injuries. He's he's seen the ups, ups and downs of footy, so he, he's uh, he's a really well-rounded guy that that's really helped me out and, and supported me, and um, he's he's pushed me from from the, my first knee reconstruction really to, to get back, and um, I'll yeah. I'll, I sort of wouldn't wouldn't have been able to do it without his support. I suppose he's he has been massive for me. Somehow he has maintained a positive attitude. He's maintained his leadership qualities around the group. He's maintained his absolute um, dedication to uh, his rehab, dedication to his training, dedication to his teammates, and um, dedication to the club. And he's. Uh, He's been helping me for the last two years um, in, the, in the reserves and he's been fantastic. And I think some of the early parts of my coaching career, I wouldn't have been able to get through without Alex's help and his, his bubbly attitude and his uh, willingness to um, push through adversity. And I think I learned a lot from him and, and, we, and we all have. And um, that says a lot about Alex. He hasn't played a game for for so long, yet people are still learning from him. It's just something within me, I suppose, that I've, I've been able to always keep positive and, 
and keep things in perspective. Um, you know, there are a lot of people a lot worse off than me in the world and, you know, I've still got to have a really good job over the last few years. I've still got, get to come to work with a, with a, at a really good place with a lot of good people and keep fit for a living. So, you know, it hasn't been too hard, but, um, yeah, I've just always had that goal of, of returning to the field and, and that's what, you know, I want to achieve. Not many people know the work that you put in and, and I guess the hard times that you've had to go through. So, mate, really cherish it, which I know you will, uh, and you'll come back and you'll be a great player. So, congrats to you and to the Swans as well for sticking by you. I'm sure at, at the stage you run down on the ground, there, there'll be a few tears in, in people's eyes and, and certainly in mine, um, because he has just provided us with so much um, over the, the last couple of years. And I know from my perspective, um, I'm just really proud of who he is, not just as a footballer, but more importantly as a, as a person. His mental resilience is as strong as I've ever seen and um, his ability to put the setbacks to one side and keep focusing on the future um, has been at an incredibly high level. Yeah, he's someone that you look up to in terms of um, life, I guess, to, to know that things aren't that bad and you, know, you can always overcome things, you know, tough times. You know, last for a bit, but you know, strong people you know, will always last. He's one of those guys, and um, it'll be great to see him run out with the red and white uh, this year. And uh, you know, we'll be all there to cheer him on. Three and a half years ago, this bloke played his last game. He gets the opportunity to play uh, again this weekend. Our reserves, uh, one of the most popular blokes in this club. Um, everyone in this room, including the staff, have got an enormous amount of time for AJ. I just want to wish him all the best for his first game. Now, obviously, it's been a long time coming. It's been yeah, nearly four years since I last played, but I wouldn't have done without this footy club. that's shown a lot of faith in me. And you boys supported me all the way, it's been, uh, it's been huge, so I can't wait to get out there Saturday and just be playing for the game.